this week's episode of Eye of the Needle. I'm Katie Salute. And I'm Chase McLaren. Let's kick things off with school news. Thanks, Katie and Chase. Happy birthday week to Archina Mark, Ethan Williams, and Tiffany Leonard. Tuesday was Shakespeare's birthday. English teachers dressed up in Renaissance costumes in honor of his birthday. They greeted students at the door, then again they recited sonnets during lunch. The journalism team participated in the IHSPA Spring Contest and placed in 18 positions, whereas last year they only placed in 14, with five first place winners, five second place, three third place, and nine honorable mentions. Journalism teacher Allison Berryhill states, I'm extremely proud that we swept the weekly news category. We put a lot of work into that as an aspect of our journalism program. Berryhill also mentioned that the journalism team is not a one-person job. Everyone puts work into making the program great. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand from New York came to Iowa Western to speak. Gillibrand is another presidential candidate. Hi, I'm Cameron Church. I'm with AHS Needle, and I'm here to speak with Kirsten Gillibrand, a future 2020 presidential candidate. What's your definition of a leader, and what is your purpose as a leader? As someone who does the right thing, even if it costs them everything. Someone who does the right thing to help others, to put others before themselves. Someone who does the right thing to take their country or community or school forward and move it towards the right direction. Someone who listens and absorbs and understands what the people you're serving need and want and then try to find the solutions to make that happen. We are only asked, what do you think? Do you think this is okay? Do you think this is defensible? And I chose along with, I don't know, maybe 30 other senators to say, it's not okay. I also am a mom of sons, and this is what really mattered the most. Conversations I was having with Theo, who's now 15, at home was, Mom, why are you so tough on Al Franken? And I had to say, Theo, you can't grope a woman anywhere on her body without her consent. You can't forcibly kiss a woman ever without her consent. And that it's not okay for you, and it's not okay for Senator Franken. I'm running for president because I want to heal this nation and I want to bring us back together again. And I'm strong enough and brave enough to take on the special interests. President Trump isn't. He said he would, dra he would drain the swamp. <laughs> He's filled it. He's got the elite of the elite in his cabinet. We've got indictments left and right. Culture of corruption has returned to Washington. And so you gotta take it on. And you gotta have the courage and conviction and fearless determination that it's going to take to actually do it. And I know I can do it. Now here's Katie with Fine Arts. Thanks, Kayla and Emma. Congratulations to Genevieve Martinez for being named to the West Iowa District's World Schools Debate Team for the National Speech and Debate Tournament. Her along with Sarah Shirley and Troy Roach have all qualified for this tournament. The speech and debate showcase is tomorrow at the high school at 7 p.m. Patty Hannon will be held on Sunday. This band concert includes 6th, 7th, 8th, and high school band. They will also honor seniors and award two scholarships. The spring music concert is next Tuesday at 8 p.m. and large group is the following Friday. Now here's sports with Reagan and Chase. Thanks, Katie. On Monday, girls golf traveled to Ames, where Bailey Newell and Alyssa Ginther finished 7th and 8th, respectively. The team earned a 3rd place finish overall. On Thursday, the girls were at Shenandoah, where they shot a 175 to beat out the other four teams on the course. Boys golf was in Denison earlier this week, and senior Matt Gearhart parred with a 71 and earned a medal. Tuesday, the boys took on the Harlan Cyclones at home and took the win with a score of 165 to 170. On Thursday, the boys were at home where they won the meet, shooting a 164. Matt Gearhart carded a 38, while Braden Smith was right behind him, shooting a 39. Girls Tennis defeated the Harlan Cyclones 6-3 on Monday, grasping their first conference win for the first time in seven years. The girls kept it going until Tuesday, when they defeated Audubon 5-4. The tennis boys also took it to Harlan on Monday, defeating the Cyclones 9-0. The boys also swept Red Oak on Thursday, taking all six singles matches as well as all three doubles. Junior Niall Peterson remains undefeated in singles for the season. Boys soccer was at Creston on Tuesday and suffered a 0-3 loss from the Panthers. On Thursday, the boys were at Underwood where Benjamin Anderson scored the lone goal 
in the 1-3 loss against the Eagles. Both boys and girls track were at Lewis Central for yet another meet on Monday. The boys finished in third place, just five points behind Glenwood, and the girls placed second. Nine Trojan runners will be running at the Drake Relays today and tomorrow. Good luck to Zay Nicholson and Chase Molnix in the Open 400, Craig Allen Becker and Molnix in the Open 800, the boys' distance medley relay, and lastly, both girls' and boys' 4x400 relays. Now here's an ad from Chloe, Kenzie, and Anna. Did you get signed up for AHS Journalism? No, what can I sign up for? You can sign up for the following. Yearbook! <laughs> Broadcasting! And you can make ads like we do! Hey guys, I never joined journalism when I was a freshman or a sophomore or a junior. I really regret it. Hi, I'm Briar Rose. And I'm Cameron Church. And today we are going to be talking about controversial, controversial topics. I think pineapple should be on pizza. I don't think pineapple should be on pizza because sweet does not go with pizza. Like pizza is supposed to be cheese and then like meats or vegetables and stuff like that. Pineapple is sweet and it doesn't go with it. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't mix well. It's not a good combination. I think it's a great combination because it gets like the sweet and the salty all together. You like, I no, think it's just a perfect, work. I think it's a perfect blend because like you get like, that sweet factor to it, and I feel like it tastes so good. With no, it all the saltiness disgusting, and everything. No. Disgusting. Because salt is not supposed to go with sweet. You're supposed to keep those separate. No, literally, it's sweet and salty. Like no. those go together, perfect. They really don't though, because it does not taste good. But it that's why you don't amazing. put it on there. You just eat pineapple by itself. Like it's not supposed to go on there. Do you even like pineapple? No, but that's besides <laughs> exactly. the topic. Exactly. Just Yo, chickies! What up, home sneezes? It's your boys. McDonald's is better because the fries. It's all okay, about the on, fries. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. You're not going to interrupt me while I'm talking. Thank you. Next. The burger is just the side dish. She's what you eat to get full. But you are there for the fries. You do not go to a fast food restaurant and not get fries. Like, you are, that is the whole course meal. The fries are better. So everything else becomes irrelevant. All right, well... Me and my side chicks think different because you go there, you go to Burger King, right? You get there and you get the most massive burger you've ever seen in your life. Like you're sitting there, you look at it, you're like, darn, I don't know what I can do. Like this, it's kind of scary, intimidating, you know? It's so big and juicy and greasy that you're like, mmm, I'm going to be full. And then the fries, you know, I mean, like I'm not going to lie. McDonald's fries are good. I know that I have the overall reputation to be a male sexist person. Now that's not always the case, but I do have some arguments that I would say that men are by far the superior gender. Why, you say? Well, I'm going to start off with history showing us that it happened to be the men that were going to be responsible for everything in the household financially. However, the women were going to be responsible for raising the kids, which is where they should be cooking and cleaning for the men folk. And I do understand that history perspective, but then as women started to gain more confidence in their intellectual, and there's all forms of intellectual ability, um, that you really started to see women stand up for themselves more, have more of a voice. So. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Eye of the Needle. I'm Chase McLaren. And I'm Katie Saluk. Happy, Happy Friday, Friday, HS.